We got the trans training here. We are working on a 2004 Ford Power Stroke. Someone's been in here before. It's got a crack on the edge of the case right there. Um, but this truck's got a failed transmission fluid temp sensor in it. So once we get this thing drained down, we're going to drop the pan on it. We're going to pull the filter off, replace that while we're in there, clean the pan out. And we're going to put a transmission fluid temp sensor in. When these things fail, uh, they do a lot of weird stuff. It'll go into limp mode sometimes. It doesn't like going up to speed. Uh, the tow haul light will flash on it. You'll have really erratic readings from the trans temp gauge. And they're a pretty common failure inside of these things. So I've got all the bolts out of it but one. What I'm finding is these bolts are way over tightened. There you go. One of them, my impact driver wouldn't pull out. And there's no reason that an impact driver shouldn't take pan bolts out of a transmission. So that's probably why we have the crack in the case up there that they've rigged a nut and bolt setup up to tighten. They're lucky they didn't do more damage than that when they did this. Doesn't look too bad inside of here. The pan is really clean in it. Even the magnet's clean. It hasn't been too long ago this has been apart. This back because it's about to make a mess. I'm gonna go grab a couple tools real quick. We'll get that transmission fluid temp sensor popped right out of there. And then we can start putting this thing back together. I'm not sure if that's picking up for you guys, but the second I crawl out from under the truck, it starts raining. So, I'm gonna try to work fast here and get this thing done. And there's a TFT sensor. So it's out. It only takes a quarter turn to get them out. There it is, back in, connector back on it. Now, take some fluid, move up the seal on the filter. It just pushes up in there. Now, we're gonna take the pan out of here real quick. Drag it out from under the truck. We're gonna clean it out, and then put it back on. This has the factory reusable filter on it. Or not filter, uh, pan gasket. And these are actually a lot nicer gasket than the cheap flat rubber ones that come in the kits with the filters. So 
we're gonna clean this all up and we're gonna go ahead and get it reinstalled. So we've got fluid going back in. I'm not sure if I mentioned it before too, but the O-ring stayed in the trans from the old filter. We did notice it, catch it and pull it out before we put the trans back together. But you gotta be careful with these. They're known for doing that. That O-ring will just stick up in the valve body. Or I guess it's not the valve body, it's a case. But check for that. We're putting fluid in it. Um, get ready to hop back underneath and do the secondary filter on it. It has a bypass filter in the cooler lines. Be careful when you're doing them. They can be a pain. They get way over tightened or just corroded and seized up. But we'll get that filter thrown in. Uh, put fluid in it and we'll get this thing running again and we should be good to go. So we put eight quarts in. That's two gallons before we started it. Ran the truck through all the gears. And it's just barely reading on the bottom of the dipstick, so we're going to put another quart in, let it sit for a minute, and check it. Usually it's 8 to 10 quarts when you do one of these. Um, I usually do 8 before I start it, and then top off from there. It's not going to kill it to be a quarter too low at idle. Just make sure you get it adjusted before you go drive it, and then recheck after you do a test drive. So we've just got the truck out. We're taking it out on a drive. We kind of want some mixed surfaces. I've already taken it down some back roads where we've got you know, sustained 55, 60 mile an hour traffic. And now we're doing some city streets. I just want to give it a good mix of driving to make sure that the transmission uh, temperature sensor is not going to act up. This was an intermittent problem on this truck. So with any intermittent problem, you want to do some good testing before, you know, you mark it as fixed and give it back to the customer. Now, this is a pretty common failure. And, uh, we did some testing prior and we had it narrowed down to if the problem was either going to be in the harness inside the trans or the sensor. Uh, off camera, I did some checking on the harness from the TFT to the pin on the case. We didn't have any issues, so I'm pretty confident that this hasn't repaired, but you still want to verify you know, any repair before you let it go back to the customer, because nothing looks worse than saying the truck's fixed, giving it back to the customer, and then you know they call you right back that it still has the same problem. It doesn't make you very you know look very good as a, a technician if you can't fix it right the first time. All right, we just got back from the test drive on the 6 liter here. Put some miles on it. Uh, I called the customer and asked him before how long he was driving it when he was having the issue. And we made sure we went well beyond uh, you know, the amount of time and miles that he was having the problems with. Uh, it's no longer throwing any codes. Uh, we don't have any lights acting up. The transmission isn't going into limp mode. So I'm going to say we have this one fixed. We double-checked fluid when we got back. We were right in the middle of the hot lines, and that was nine quarts to get it uh, to that point. So we're going to say this thing is good. We're going to send it back to the customer. Now, if you guys want to follow us, you can follow Indiana Mobile Diesel on Instagram or Facebook at Indiana Mobile Diesel. If you want to follow me personally, it's Spike383 on Instagram or Snapchat. Those are in the end cards of our videos. Every Friday night, we have a live stream. So uh, check in Friday night anywhere between... 7 and 9 Eastern will usually start the live stream. Kind of just depends on where I'm at and what I'm doing. Um, the live streams are just a big Q&A. Anything you guys want to talk about, we go through in the live stream. It's all up to you know whoever decides to come in for it. If you like our videos, please leave a like. Uh, if you have any comments, constructive criticism, anything like that, leave them down below. Uh, if you're not subscribed to the channel, uh, I'd ask you to check out a few more of our videos. And if you like it, please subscribe. And if you guys can share our videos around, we'd really appreciate that. Also, we have a Patreon for the channel. Uh, the Patreon does not come back to us. We are using it for a pay it forward program. We are trying to get money raised on Patreon to buy parts so we can go out and at no cost fix people's cars who can't afford to fix them themselves. So we've just started that program here. Uh, hopefully in the next couple weeks here, we'll have the first video out on the first car. But thank you guys for watching. Have a good one.